Hi everyone, today I want to talk about one of the most interesting and probably my favorite episodes of The X-Files. That episode is Home, the second episode of the show's fourth season. If you've never seen The X-Files, the basic premise is two FBI agents, Dana Scully and Fox Mulder, go around solving strange, spooky cases. They investigate aliens, demons, ghosts, you know, FBI stuff. Mulder is a quick-to-believe conspiracy nut who usually ends up being on track, and Scully is the more skeptical and measured of the duo. The show has a main plot involving alien abduction and government conspiracy, but it kind of loses its way in later seasons and, in my opinion, is not the real reason to watch The X-Files. The main draw of the series to me is the chemistry between its two leads and its fantastic Monster of the Week episodes. These rarely advance the overarching plot and are instead little self-contained stories that are just about Scully and Mulder solving a case. Home is one such episode, but it's pretty unique among the Monster of the Week adventures. Most notably, it's the first X-Files episode to ever receive the TVMA rating, and it received that rating for a good reason. Real quick content warning for this episode, there's going to be some violent images. It's probably the most violent and frightening episode of the whole show. The reason it ended up this way is that Home was the first episode back for writers Glenn Morgan and James Wong. They were really important to the success of the first two seasons, but took a break from writing for the show in Season 3. They wanted to make a statement with their return in Season 4, and aimed for this episode to shock people. And it worked. Some fans hated the more horror-focused direction, and others loved its darker tone. Home takes place in the small town of Home, Pennsylvania, where the deformed, inbred Peacock family is up to no good. The episode opens with a birth in the family, followed immediately by the burial of said baby. Like I said, this one gets dark. Uh, there's a wonderfully gruesome scene in the opening where a group of kids are playing baseball outside the Peacock property. The batter starts digging into the dirt, preparing for the next pitch, and as the camera holds on the dirt for just a second too long, the audience already knows what's about to come. As the batter digs in his heels, the ground starts to bleed. Mulder and Scully are quickly on the scene, and they learn about the Peacock family from the local sheriff. He tells them that they have been living on that land since the Civil War. So for the past 150 years, there has been far too much inbreeding and not nearly enough cleaning going on in the Peacock household. This has caused the youngest generation to become gruesome, violent weirdos who are surprisingly good at animal husbandry. Those are some healthy looking pigs. Anyway, I can't go much further without getting into spoilers, so if you want to watch this episode spoiler free, this is where you get off. The sheriff tells the agents that the Peacock family is just three brothers, and that their mother and father died in a car accident a decade ago. The sheriff laments that the modern world has finally reached his quiet town, and that he is afraid of the changes that this murder case will bring. Scully comments that the corpse has been affected by every rare birth defect known to science, and has her suspicions pretty much confirmed via autopsy later in the episode. She also discovers that the child died suffocating on dirt, proving that the child was buried alive and confirming that this is a murder case. Mulder picks a weird time to flirt, and Scully is understandably shook by the whole child murder thing. Mulder argues that this is a simple murder case and is outside of their jurisdiction, but Scully reminds him that the sheriff said that the Peacock family is only men, so that means that they likely have a woman captive in their home. This makes it a murder, and a kidnapping which pushes it into FBI jurisdiction. The two head over to the Peacock's house, and there is a great moment where Scully warns Mulder that he can't enter without probable cause, and Mulder pulls out his flashlight to just look into the house instead. They both spot their probable cause sitting on a table in the form of a pair of bloody scissors. They then both wordlessly draw their guns and walk right in. They search the house and find that the house is empty, or so they think. Great shot, by the way. That night, the Peacock brothers hop in their Cadillac and head out to do some crimes. It's a really effective way of building tension, where the director leaves the destination of the Peacocks up to question, cutting between the car, the sheriff's house, and the detective's hotel. 
Who the Peacocks choose is revealed by the music from their radio slowly fading in, and we see the downfall of the never locking your doors policy that the home residents subscribe to. The scene that follows is pretty brutal. The brothers force their way in, and the sheriff fails to fight them off. He is savagely killed as his wife watches from under the bed, knowing that she is up next. Next, we get the other cops' reaction to the murders, and Mulder and Scully decide from there that it's time to revisit the Peacock's farm. The cop who found the couple seems to want some revenge, so he decides to join in on the raid to help even the odds for the detectives. Redshirt cop goes in first and is promptly decapitated by a booby trap, and then torn apart by the Peacock brothers. We'll miss you, buddy. Mulder and Scully seem barely phased by this for some reason, and decide to create a distraction by releasing the Peacock's pigs. This works, and the duo manage to get into the house safely. And here's where things get real gross. The detectives finally find the woman being held in the house, and the owner of the creepy pair of eyes from earlier. The twist is, they discover that she has no inclination to leave. You might have seen this coming, but the peacock mother survived her car crash. Barely. And she is the mother of the deformed child. She reveals that the peacock family have CIPA disease. The condition where you can't feel pain, so she's actually doing better than you'd think. She likes it under the bed just fine and isn't kidnapped at all. She has an intense discussion about family loyalty with Scully, telling her that if she were a mother, she would understand why she loves and defends her sons, despite their tendency to murder people. <gasps> the sons get wise to our hero's pork-based trickery and barge into the house to save their mom. They scrap, Scully shoots one of the brothers a bunch, and he can't feel pain, so it takes a while. And the second brother gets nailed to the floor by his own trap. Awesome. But wait, where's the third? Mulder and Scully discover that the mom and the third brother took off while the fight was going on. They got away. The episode ends with a couple driving off to rebuild their family somewhere else. How inspiring. See what I mean by dark? This episode is easily one of the meanest episodes of the series. Mulder and Scully fail at almost every turn. They don't save the sheriff and his wife, there was never a kidnapping in the first place, and two members of the Peacock family escape to continue being gross and dangerous somewhere else. The whole message of the episode feels pretty mean-spirited. The sheriff, who just wanted to live in a quiet town, gets killed along with his wife, and the cop that wants to avenge them is beheaded within like five minutes. The whole message of the episode feels like it's making fun of the small town values idea, and while I agree with the idea that small towns aren't any more wholesome than big cities are, it feels like the writers of this episode were particularly cruel about getting this point across. It's a different tone than your average X-Files episode, but I actually found it pretty refreshing, and I'm not sure what that says about my own taste in media. I think it's pretty cool to see the show lean into horror a bit more, to have an episode with a mean, nihilistic case where our heroes make a mess of things. Keep in mind that this aired in 1996, where TV networks were a bit more reluctant to release something this dark than they are today. It helps that the villains of Home are so well put together. For starters, just look at them. It's like someone turned up the heat in a wax museum. It might be a little cliche to say this, but I really do think that the most horrifying antagonists in media are the ones that are close to human in nature. You can say that the peacocks are animalistic or deformed, but they are quite human and have human emotions and instincts. They show remorse when the baby is born with deformities, and they are fiercely loyal and protective of each other. Having villains who are capable of caring and love as well as violence and rage is always engaging. The key scene in this episode is when Mrs. Peacock is speaking to Scully. You can see that despite their horrible crimes, this is still a family unit. This brings the horror pretty close to home, uh, forcing the viewer to look at something awful that really isn't too far from themselves. So that's what I think about Home, a pretty drastic but welcome change of pace for the X-Files series. While I can't say I would have preferred if all of the show's episodes had this dark tone, I do kind of wish they had dipped into it a few more times. The premise of the X-Files has so much room to play around with when it comes to plot and tone. The series balances mystery, horror, action, romance, and even comedy really well, and Home is a great example of how the show can really push its core themes to a more extreme place. 
If you've never watched The X-Files, you could probably jump right into this episode and still get a lot out of it. Watch order doesn't matter quite as much in the Monster of the Week episodes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.